Welcome to Anderson, South Carolina. We are near the field, T.L. Hannah High School, where famous football is played every Friday night. Now, we hope every Friday night is a winning night for T.L. Hannah. We are talking to two men who are definitely both winners. Um, if you haven't seen the movie Radio, then you've been under a rock somewhere because I've told you and told you and told you. Go rent it, go purchase it, get it, watch it. Every single chance you get, watch the movie Radio. What? We're going to interview two gentlemen. If you've seen Radio, you know what it's all about. You know the great story, you know the great message, and you know <coughs> the great hope for helping others. Um, we tell you every single day, do a little something that makes a difference in someone else's life. Today we have traveled to Anderson, South Carolina to celebrate a very, very special birthday. Happy birthday, Radio. Thank you. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you. Coach Jones, thank you for allowing us to do this. Well, we appreciate y'all showing thank us. Thank you. This is uh, it's a very special birthday for Radio. Thank you. 64 years old, and you're still at the ball team every Friday night. You're yes. still on the field, right? Yeah, on the field at the Jones, right? On now, the field. Coach Jones, when you retired, did you worry about not being here to be with Radio? Well, one of the big worries was, you know, what would the new coach would be? Would they uh, carry on, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, worried about that because once I left, uh, radio quit coming to practice, mm -hmm. so I had to had to go out, bring him out, and tell him, hey, get on back on the field. Mm -hmm. It took a while, but, it, but everything went smooth after mm -hmm. that. And, uh, they took care of him and went to all the ball games. Now, you know, radio is, uh, when I was here, Radio would stay on the field, the sidelines at the home games the whole time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But now, about halftime, he he comes with his backpack and all, and coming on up and stands with us. Uh, so, right. so I mean, I guess he's not when he comes out and busts the banner. Mm -hmm. He's slow down. <laughs> he's slow <laughs> down, man. <laughs> At 64, he can slow right. down just a That's little right. bit. Yeah, it's time Book for semi-retirement. That's right. Here come radio. Now, because of your relationship with this Book wonderful young man, you huh? are... Uh, Andy who? Are you involved in Special hey, Olympics? Andy who? Uh, yeah, you know, well, I, I, I go down to... Uh, huh? We call it Special Populations here. That's mm -hmm. uh, Area 14 here. Uh, special I, go down in, I go down there in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Radio summer. has always participated in the Special Olympics. Okay. Now, somebody tell me you've taken up bowling. Is that right? Yeah. Are you good at bowling? Yep. Good for you. I see that. Special <laughs> shirt on. I I know you got your bowling shirt on. <laughs> now, um, when you retired, bowling. did you, you loved football, and that was one of the things not you instilled in the not movie. Not all the pain, You loved football more than anything, but you fell in love like with a young man off the field. Right. Hey, His I like relationship bowling. with you had to have totally turned not your life around. I loved the down. One time, you know, ball, my, one time my ball went and cut it. First, we, you know, I, was, I don't want to go to you know, he just kept coming back to practice, you know what I mean, showing up at practice. practice. Couldn't understand a word he said. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, you know, it took, it took years before we could actually really understand or he could even uh, say our names. Right. So, you know, it, it was something that grew on us right. year after year. So in 64, that's when he showed up. First time I was actually play, uh, uh, coaching JV football for Hannah High School, mm -hmm. and uh, in 19. So he was literally a young man at that time. He was 18 years old. Right. 18 years old, and he, we didn't realize that he just lived up the hill from where we were practicing down mm -hmm. on Arden Field, and lived right two houses down on the right on the railroad street. Mm -hmm. So eventually. Uh, we integrated in 1970, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I, I was promoted to assistant on the varsity, so we moved out to the new school, which now is against Junior High School, right. in 1970. So then he shows up out there at the school and has been actually at the school ever since. Mm -hmm. Now, he also got an honorary diploma, didn't he? That's right. Well, he, I'll tell you what, he's always going to be a junior because... Uh, <laughs> He's scared if he's a, if he's a senior, he can, he'll say, he "Hey, you, you out the door." <laughs> That's right. So uh, you know he's he's yeah. not there. Now you <laughs> shared a part of the story with me that not everyone knows. Um, Radio also has a younger brother who has a disability too. Right. 
and he has a very special caregiver, and we're going to ask prayer for her today. Can you tell me a little bit about his caregiver? Uh, that's a sister. Right. That's, a, that's Radio's older brother, Walter's wife, and uh, she's had uh, brain cancer. Mm -hmm. She's had two surgeries. In fact, she's just now coming back from rehab, and she's at home. How's she doing? Uh, well, she's having to get rehab on even walking again. Wow. You know, she was down so much, and, mm -hmm. and actually speaking, you know. Uh, but, uh, so if we think our life is tough, think about this lady's situation. Right. She is a caregiver to two people who really need her help. And today she is facing recovery from... life threatening, from, yeah. life -threatening yeah. disease. And, you know, we pray all the time because we don't know what would happen to Radio and Cool Rock. Mm -hmm. If something happened to her. Right. Right. Now, how old is Linda? No, no that's my wife. No, Linda. okay. What's her name? Pat. 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 Okay, how old is Pat? Pat, I'd say close in the 64, 65 okay. area. Okay. All right. But, I mean, I don't know exactly the age, but it's, it's about that. Because it's, Walter's 18 months old in the radio. Okay. And the other brother is two Look, years younger? Is that Two years right? younger. He's 62 now. And his name is Georgia Allen Kennedy. Mm -hmm. So uh, we call him Kubra. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, Radio, tell me what your full name is. James. James. Robert. Mom Kennedy. Kennedy. Okay, were you named after a president of the United States? Who yeah. do you think your mom named you after? Maybe a president of the United he States. State right? I bet that's what it was. Right? Yeah. 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 Probably without state, right? <laughs> now, today we're here. Man. We're here to celebrate a very special birthday. How many people do you think will be at this birthday? No, party? no, we've invited a lot of people. We got a lot of a lot of the Wavo. kids. I mean, not the kids, but the adults coming from special populations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of them coming with their parents. We've invited, you know, uh, some of the coaches. Uh, we, you know, got to figure a lot of the coaches are right now coaching or practicing. Right. Time, so they won't be able to come. But we have got uh, Honeycutt coming with his little girl. I'll go be there. And the mm -hmm. principal's coming, Miss mm -hmm. Hilton. Mm -hmm. And we don't know who else it might be. But, uh, and our family will be there with the, with the grandkids and all that kind of stuff. So, Robin will be there. And, and Koo Rock's coming. Uh -huh. so, okay. And, and, and Robin, Robin will be there. Robin. Robin will put Koo Rock up. That's right. Yeah. Robin yeah. Bateman, who in the summer picks uh, radio up and carries them to special population. It was so okay. summertime. And that's kind of a day program where they just hang out and do that's things a, together? That is a day program. It's, it's, it's summertime. Uh, well, I'm going away both Monday summer. through Thursday. Uh -huh. And he's been, the radio's been going down the last, uh, I'm actually going, two years. I go right so, and I go, and I go quick. Hey. Now, when you retired, did you find you missed this one-on-one hey. -on -one with him every day? Oh, yeah. Well, right now, we are going to take a break. We will be back uh, at the birthday party in just a little bit. So, y'all hang around. Don't go anywhere. Don't go nowhere. It was. Uh, what your coach? I ain't gonna get it. He'd come in and I'd give him, you know, make sure he got his medicine, got all that stuff, and, uh -huh. and had to shop. Uh, yeah. Now, 
the nurse does that to us. Hey, hey, he's a diabetic now. He's on insulin. He's that started right? this uh, summer. Okay. And he seems to be doing good with keeping the sugar down. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we thought that would be a problem, which is kind of something new for us. And so it just so happened, him going to special populations, Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, I got. They gave him a shot in his medicine that I do that time. Then on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, I would take care of that child. Mm -hmm. And then once he came to the school, school started, the nurse would take care of him Monday through Friday. I'd take care of him on Saturday and mm -hmm. Sunday for us. Or, you know, give him a shot. Right. I want to ask you about a very special lady. Um, your wife gave a lot of her right. life to you. Can we talk a little bit about you her? sure can. Tell me about her. Well, Introduce your wife to our community because as I watched the movie I thought she is an amazing woman. Did they portray her as she is? She, they did and probably could have been a lot more. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, uh, she is, you know, one thing we got, in fact we just, uh, let's see, no, October the 4th we celebrated our 55th anniversary. Wow. Wow. And uh, she, I tell you what, she's been a great woman. She's, she's you know, when you're a coach and you're spending all your time out there on that field, she's home raising our three kids. We got three kids, you know, in the movie, they let us right. have one. Right. So, uh, but she, you know, she's done that because coaching in, in is just 24-7, uh, mm -hmm. just about all the time. You got got time to go out, go to church, and that's about it. Then you're back out watching films and stuff like that. So she right. is actually, uh, you know, I, I coach track also. So she would keep the score and, mm -hmm. and keep the books, and then she'd, she'd do all of the uh, book work at home, mm -hmm. you know, before that when I became AD. So she did all that work. Mm -hmm. and, and she uh, she is, like she said, is 40 some years. So mm -hmm. she, in fact, I started volunteering in 1956. So it was right after we got married. She's got to be a special lady. She is. She's got to be a special lady. I robbed her cradle. She was 16 when I married her. <laughs> <laughs> and I was 21, so, oh, wow. you know, but uh, now we got, uh, you know, our, uh, three uh, three kids, they've got uh, families, and then we've got six grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Okay, your favorite scene in the movie. Tell me your favorite scene, and I'm going to share mine with you. Favorite scene? Let's see. Well, there's a lot of good ones. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's... it's it's hard, it's hard. I guess it was a time that I told about the little boy under the house, the special needs kid. Mm -hmm. And that was when I was 12 years old. I remember that. Delivering papers, and that actually, actually happened. And, and, mm -hmm. You know, back then, we talked about back <coughs> in the 40s, you know, if you had a special need, mm -hmm. you were either locked in a room right. where nobody could see you, right. or you was... Uh, or put under the house like that kid was, right. or put in the institution. Exactly. Now, radio Families didn't take care of that. No, it's <coughs> a certain family. Now, right. Radio's mother mm -hmm. really took care of it. She worried about that. She told me that she worked, she wanted to, she worked two jobs, and she was going to make <coughs> sure they would not have to go in an institution. And, and that's, that's what she did. She worked mm -hmm. at the hospital, and she did a house well, I have two favorite scenes in the movie. Uh -huh. My very favorite is when you walk into the barber shop and you announce that you basically are going to give it up. I would love to walk over and slug that banker. I just really did not like him. I could not interview him today because I still have a hostility toward <laughs> this man. Maybe I need treatment. You know, I may need a little therapy here going on. But he really was a jerk. I mean, he just was. But his kid turned out to be a good kid. Mm -hmm. My next favorite scene is when his son presents him with the letterman's jacket. Okay. So those two scenes in the movie, you know, the dad was basically a jerk, and then the son turned out to be a good kid. Well, you know, that that really shows you in, in, in high school sports today. Uh, parents are always trying to push the kids, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Push the kids. Don't let them make up their own minds, but push right. them into play. And uh, that's what that really represents mm -hmm. because we've had a lot of parents like that. Oh, wow. And so, you know, that's just just like that. It used to be you, you, the parents would, you, you'd never see them in practice mm -hmm. because they're working. Right. And now, toward my end of a coaching career, 
they start going to practice. Uh -huh. uh, you know, they try to this and that. A lot of politics in the, oh, yeah. into the thing now. So <coughs> they've taken a lot of fun out. But you know, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was a good thing. Where is that young man today, the man who presented him with the letterman's jacket? He is actually represents not just one person, but okay. many. Okay. But many. Okay. And, and you know, the, when I see a lot of us, Former players, you know, they, they, they say, they think it's Coach, them. is that me? Yeah, yeah. I says, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay. But it's, okay. Uh, but that's, that's, that's what it does. Okay. Now, out of the movie, was there anything you would go back and change, or did they do it pretty much how you wanted it? They, they did. We told them at first, you know, uh, we didn't want them to, well, like one say, they, they called me and said, hey, we got you uh, sitting on the front porch, uh, you, know, you and Leather, and he, you know, you got a beer. Drink it, you I said, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. I don't drink. I said, don't put that. Mm -hmm. I said, you can put a coat mm -hmm. if you want to. Right. And so they, they, they took that out. Good for you. And, uh, Good for you. So you know, they. I, I told them, you know, we wanted stuff that we we could be proud of, and the people in Anderson could be proud of. Mm -hmm. The school could be proud of. So. Right. And Mike Tolan did a good job of that. He did. He stuck by his guns. The movie is incredible. Um, it's a feel-good movie. It's a think-about-it movie. Oh, cool. <clears throat> it is a classic that you want to see over and over again. And they couldn't have picked a more handsome man to play you. Cooper Jr. did a great job. Right. He, did <laughs> he made he, he did a really good job. Me. He was very handsome. He so. nailed it. Yeah, he did. And, job and and the, the man who played you, I think... It, it's almost like I've met you before, you know? He did a really good job. Well, you know, he, he likes sports. Did he I spend think. time with you? Uh, not till we actually went down to, to, to watch him film the movie. Wow. They, and Cuba didn't need it. I mean, you know, we sent some films of uh, up there that we'd had on DVDs. Mm -hmm. Not DVDs, I'm sorry, tapes. Mm -hmm. Tapes, maybe. Mm -hmm. So we sent them, and, and Cuba got all that. All his action out of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, now Ed, I met him for the first time. He was he got on the scene two weeks earlier than, than Cuba because Cuba was still filming in that Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got to meet with him and I found out they don't shoot the scenes in order. That drives you crazy, doesn't it? They're like starting at the back to the front and you're okay. That's exactly yeah. you know yeah. the last the last scene they shot was when radio was out on the field. Remember about when he got left behind with the pouring down rain. You know how they make rain? Heartbreaking. No. <laughs> no. They, got, they got a big book. A big th guy comes in with his big truck. I mean, he got that light on him so far out with this tremendous big hose. Must have been fire on it. Wow. But that's, the, they just. See, I always they, thought you had to wait for the perfect moment I, and film the scene uh, in the rain. You don't do that. Oh my goodness. And one you can see is when the bus, you remember when we couldn't go on the bus? Mm -hmm. That day you can look in the background, it's sunshine. Oh wow. It's just raining out, you know. Uh -huh. right there. So uh -huh. It's neat. They can, make, they can make anything. We found that out. Now, did you write a book or a screenplay, or did they just come to you and want to share your story? Well, the way that happened in 1996, uh, Gary Smith from Sports Illustrated, he called and he, he said he wanted to do an article. Our relationship. Uh -huh. So he came up and he spent uh, a week with us. And he did, he does so, so, I mean, he just, he's so thorough about checking out everything. Uh -huh. He probably found out things that we didn't know. Uh -huh. And, uh, but anyway, he came up and did, uh, did that care back. He lives in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh -huh. And so Gary wrote the article and it came out in right before Christmas of 96. And the name of the article was Someone to Lean On. And it was about a 10 page uh, wow. article in sports history. So, by that thing being a worldwide magazine, years, uh, Mike told him read it mm -hmm. when he was getting on the airplane. And he, he, his wife said, You know, you've got to back a book out. Mm -hmm. So that got it all started. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people called, a lot of production companies, and we, you know, we didn't know what to do. I mean, it was a shock and all that, so we put them off, mm -hmm. which was great. Mm -hmm. And then we, Mike, uh, flew down to Anderson State about two or three days with us. We liked it. We signed our life story rights with mm -hmm. it in 97. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, and then he said, you know, it, it may happen. It could be a TV thing. It could be, you know. Right. And, and he said, uh, but it could never happen. Maybe never happen. He mm -hmm. says, that's the chances. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, he'd have to re renew our contract each year. And we both had separate contracts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway, he, tried, he was going to try to uh, set it to a bigger production company. His production company was Tolan Robbins Production Company. So uh, Paramount picked it up here. Well, they didn't want to because the story was too nice, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Nice. And they did, you know, they did, uh, they wanted to do sex, right. drugs. And this is a great family story. Right. That every family in America can watch every day. That's right. Yeah. So nothing controversial nothing, about it. Nothing no. negative about it. Nothing but positive feelings. And I tell everybody, you have inspired the world. Yeah. You truly have inspired the world to do better and to I do know. more for others. Well, you know, like I said, that after that, Warner Brothers picked it up again. They turned it up the same reason. Mm -hmm. So 2002, we get a call, and uh, Revolution Studios was interested. So Mike sent Mike Rich down to do the script. He spent 10 days then on that script. I said, well, how do you do that? When you go back home, he lives mm -hmm. uh, out on the West Coast. And uh, he said, well, what do I do? I take all these pictures and do that, and I hang them up in my room. And that's just like being there with y'all. Mm -hmm. you know? But anyway, he, he wrote the script, presented it. They loved it. They said, OK, let's go back to Miami. Wow. So it, uh, they started. Uh, Actually, right, October of uh, 2002. Mm -hmm. I would be ashamed to tell you how many times I've watched the movie Radio. Oh, Lord. I would be, you would think I led a very boring life, but I just love, and every time I watch it, I see something new. One of the things that I really, really admired, his mom um, was such a together lady, mm -hmm. and I said, I would love to have known her. I would love to have known his mother. She had to be very special. She was. She was real special. And, you know, when we met them, the first time we met them, it was, it was great. Was she a little leery of you, possibly? Well, yeah, you got to figure a little, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, uh, you know, radio being out there, spending all this time, you know, right. what, what, was, what was going on. But she was a, a, a good Christian woman. And uh, we met, when we met her, it was his stepdad, her, uh, and, and Miss Kennedy, and Radio Cooper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she worked real hard. But she always calling me, you know, because I told her, I said, don't worry about it. If we go out of town, we, it will be late when we mm -hmm. get back. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She always get worried, back. worried about it. <laughs> yeah. about, it about a boy. But, uh, but anyway, it, it, uh, she didn't even call me from when she was in the hospital. So, you know, I was getting, how's everything going, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, you do not have to worry about it. Right. And, uh, but she's like a safe path and system on it's just like her, mm -hmm. good Christian woman. Mm -hmm. And you know, radio and Kurok both go to separate churches. Uh, a band picks up each one of them, mm -hmm. Wednesday night, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Radio goes to <laughs> Generosity Baptist Church, which was in the movie. Uh -huh. You know, they tried to get the, the preacher wow. to you know, come I down and do it. <laughs> but, but the preacher <clears throat> had something or some other thing. Mm -hmm. Great preacher. We've been down there, they got a New church. I mean, they built onto that church, mm -hmm. big church. Like radio says, they got two big screens, uh -huh. and, and radios in the choir. I oh, wow. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> but anyway, they 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 they're real good people. Now, another part of his story that wasn't shown on film. Um, you said something happened to him after the filming. Their home burned, right. and they lost everything. Can we touch on how this community came together and helped them? We did. You know, uh, after the the, the home burned on. November 1st, right after the movie came out on the 23rd of October. Wow. And uh, they lost everything. The only thing they had was what, what they wore to bed that night. Goodness. But nobody was injured. Nobody was injured. And, and, and you know, I always give God all the praise for that because we we were worried about all this time of trying to get them out of that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It had become a neighborhood with drugs mm -hmm. and shootings and stuff like that. Right. And we wouldn't be able to, you know, and I said, well, maybe when, when the movie comes out, well, maybe we'll get enough money. Well, it didn't. Uh -huh. It happened. So when the, the first person there 
first people there was the Salvation Army. Wow. They were there to, to, to say, hey, we're going to take care of you, get two motel rooms for y'all. Mm -hmm. That was when Pat walked on radio and cool. Right. And uh, we got on the national uh, radio. <laughs> we started out with radio's fire relief fund. Uh -huh. We raised money and there were a lot of help from the people that were the movie. Right. And Sports Illustrated. Even Jim Nance from CBS Sports, he, he, he have done a lot. So you know, it, it was it, it was pretty good. The, the, the community, uh, we got some help from them, but it's surprising we don't even get a, as much help. Mm -hmm. I think the community thinks that radio and I maybe made made a million dollars on right. this movie, right. which is nowhere, nothing. Right. Right. But uh, that's. Sometimes that's why. But you know, the millions that you did get, you can't put in your bank account. But people like me who share this movie with everybody and who share your story, there's no dollar value you oh, can no. place on that. No, no, no dollar value. No, and I tell you what, it's it's just surprising how many people are still getting on our website and emailing to us. In fact, right now, I think I noticed today I, I got 360 something on there. I got mm -hmm. an answer. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been played over other countries, mm -hmm. in Russia, in right. Africa, right. places like that. So we're hearing from all these people. It is now changing people's lives. Oh, yes. The way they look at people with special needs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let me tell you about one other Look thing. Look at that. That thing goes way, way up there. It's our Outdoor Dream Foundation. Okay. My son started it uh, four years ago, I think, going five now. But uh, we're all volunteers, and we actually, we actually, uh, uh, being a volunteer, we raise our money by donations, mm -hmm. having events, with, uh, having raffles, and, and, and uh, live auctions. Mm -hmm. But what we do, we grant wishes to terminally ill kids or with life-threatening disease to go right. on an outdoor adventure, which mm -hmm. is, which is fishing, uh, hunting. We sent two little girls with some up to Alaska to go mushing. Oh wow! Yeah, and they like had that. a ball. Yeah. And and you know they, you know when they go out and they forget the illness, they laugh and they're having a good time. That is the reward we get back. Mm -hmm. And so we go, we've sent over 200 some kids uh, out on their, their dream trips. And uh, yeah, if people are interested in that, do you have a separate website for that? Yes, we do. We have this www dot outdoordream.org okay. and uh, actually they can actually order our <coughs> book which is the book that Gary Smith wrote of his articles and I tell you our our article is in there someone to lean on the name of the book is uh, Beyond the Game by Gary Smith okay. and what we do when we go out and speak and radio what we go together we, uh, we sell those books for $30 all the money goes straight to our foundation for the kids. That's wonderful. And we sign them, personalize them. So if they order them, it's thirty-three for hand, you know, three dollars mm -hmm. for handling. But that really helps our organization. Mm -hmm. They want to. Bart Mountain Center Choir would like to thank you and all the staff at ETC TV for inviting us to be guests on your program. We enjoy so very much being able to bring cheer in song. We would also like to thank you for your support of the mission and goals of the staff, parents, caregivers, and board of directors at Burnt Mountain Center. You're, I can't do it. You finish it. Here goes my makeup again. <laughs> you are truly a special friend to the choir and to Burnt Mountain Center. May you enjoy continued success as you reach out to your viewers, the Burnt Mountain Center choir members, and everybody signed it. It is so sweet. Precious. So sweet. Thank you. Thank you. My eye makeup can't take much more of this. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we are joined by the director of the Burnt Mountain Center. You have, Debbie Rooker, you have the most amazing job in the world. I'm truly mm -hmm. blessed. You have the most amazing job. Now, Jane, how did you get involved in this? Well, my background is social services, so I've always been involved in one way or another, uh, either paid or volunteer. Right. And um, after retiring, I just felt like I needed to give back to community. And Ryan Austin and I are in choir together at the church where we go, uh -huh. and his mom asked me about possibility of, of uh, going to the center and volunteering and helping start music with the gang, so we did. Well, um, you know, when we went to interview radio, have you seen the movie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love I, I love the movie, but after I met these two wonderful gentlemen, I understood, because then I read the story of how radio could have been left aside, never helped, never supported, never brought out into what we call the real world. And this, this man, Coach Jones, made this great difference in this young man's life. Now, 46 years later, they are still partners in crime. <laughs> they are into something all the time. And they have brought awareness to doing for others, to doing for others. Now, as you volunteer, when you leave the center, do you want to tell other people about what you're doing, and do you want to bring more volunteers on? Constantly. In fact, uh, a girlfriend of mine from church is, helps me with the group. Her mm -hmm. name is Gail, and we meet once a week over there at the center and sing and have a good time. Uh -huh. Now, why did they ask us not to sing, Charlene? Did they hear us sing? Well, you know, <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> you know, we couldn't sing, but for you to put together a group of people, you taught one-liners, pretty much, mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. verse in each song, and the time you put into that, are there ever times that you kind of bang your head and say, Okay, guys, let's get it together. Let's get this done. <laughs> or is it always on cue and as good as it was today? Oh, no. <laughs> you heard our first song, Feliz Navidad. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think we know Spanish real well. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I thought it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I took two years of Spanish and could not get it. Could not get it. If they deported me and sent me to Mexico, I would just sit there silent the whole the rest of my life. I can't get it. Now, occasionally, do you kind of bump a little, little bump in the road and you think, okay, how can I get through? How can I make this happen? And then do you find a way to always get through? Oh, yes, yes. The guys are just so heartwarming to work with. Uh -huh. uh, if I feel down in any way and I go to the center, they're such a blessing. Mm -hmm. They add so much to our lives. Gail and I just... We were talking about it in the car before everybody got here, how much they bless our lives. We thought we were doing something for them, mm -hmm. but obviously they're blessing us more than we could ever share back with them. Right. Now, Debbie, you said you have treasures. You brought me a treasure today, and this looks like it's not something I want to keep. It looks like something we'll be eating. Uh-oh. Yes, it, it is. Like <laughs> you know, I had a lot of keepsakes, and um, it's funny, but I said if I can't wear it, eat it, or what else did I say? I had three things this year for Christmas, how precious, and everybody signed it. Now, uh -huh. can, can we go over their names? Can you tell us, everybody who's involved in that? Okay. Yeah, we got Brandy, uh -huh. uh, Brandy and, uh, yeah. James Corson, Vicki uh -huh. Davis, Matt, Jean, with Kyle signed this Hitt. one. I see Tim Hitt. Yes. Uh, Yay. Fred. Uh huh. And it's just a, a group of them. It's from all the and uh -huh. Scotty signed that one. And uh -huh. It's just a from uh, all the staff in the Thank participants. Thank you. Thank you so so much. Um, I know what your job means to you, and I know how fortunate you are to still have this job with budget cuts. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time that the center was in crisis? It's always been a little bit close. You know, we're, with the budget cuts coming down and everything, you have to watch it and everything, but we have been very fortunate with the support of the community mm -hmm. that we've been able to uh, keep going. And we never turn anybody away. Right. And uh, there's new services that we offer, and we're going to continue to grow and to be the biggest center in North Georgia and give support to anyone in need. What about the cookbook? I haven't seen it yet, but I want to know, where can people purchase the cookbook? Uh, they're in some of the local stores Blue in Jasper. Blue Star. Blue Star. Blue Star's yeah. got them, and I'll call the center, and okay. we will be glad to mail one out to anyone that needs it. Okay. Uh, they're great. 
absolutely great. You need to get one to do your Christmas cookies and things with. Uh -huh. So there's some mm -hmm. super recipes in it. Uh -huh. And all this money goes to the participants in something. With the last cookbook sales, we did wonderful. Uh, we were able to do a little park beside the center, a garden. We did a memory garden in memory of one of uh, our parents that's gone, that she helped start the cookbook. Uh, and it was, it's wonderful. I mean, we were able to buy five picnic tables, glider swings, uh, a pit. We've got uh, a garden. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So That's please awesome. come and visit us. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to come and visit, what if somebody sitting at home said, you know, I could do crafts, I could possibly uh, make some birdhouses and then bring them and let the clients paint the birdhouses. <laughs> if you're sitting at home and you have a talent, what, what else could people do to give back to the center? Just come by and walk through and look and see what we're about and what we're doing. And we're out in the community. You know, just be, be willing to open your doors mm -hmm. uh, and, and welcome the guys in. Give them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlene has been one person that started 25 Long years ago, ago. Right. Mm -hmm. and uh, she opened the doors and gave opportunity to uh, some of our participants that would not have had the chance to go out right. and learn work skills, mm -hmm. and by her benevolence, these people have blossomed and right. bloomed. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, and they get a paycheck, and to yes. be to be of value, you know, because everybody, I remember my first paycheck, oh, it was terrible, $51.21. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was 65 a week, and the taxes were taken out, $51.21, but I was so proud of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it wasn't the big dollar value, it was that I'd accomplished something. Yes, so. and that, that means so much to our guys, to get that paycheck, whether it's for $0.38 cents or $38. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that is really important to them because they earn this. Mm -hmm. And they come back with and tell you stories that they carried their family out to dinner one night right. mm -hmm. or they've got a new pair of shoes on with something that, you know, they bought for themselves and all. Right. And it's precious. And now getting near the Christmas season, all we're hearing is going to go Christmas shopping. I've got to get this and I've got to get that. And they're saving. And it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. If they're so loving they want to give everything away. <laughs> they hope we have to, you know. Uh, but it's yeah. what you know, they're, they're very proud of what they've accomplished, mm -hmm. and they're doing wonderful. We've got a lot of new work coming into the center. I was going to ask you, can we name some of the other companies who possibly are providing work for the center? Uh -huh. We work with Chart Industries and Ball Ground, right. uh, Precision Packaging and Ball Ground, Royston and Tate. Right. We have people at uh, Lexington Components in Jasper, mm -hmm. uh, the Piedmont Mountainside Medical, North Georgia Medical up here in LJ, both Walmarts, LJ and Jasper. Mm -hmm. We have jobs coming in from everywhere now. So we've been really blessed with having enough work. Pickens County Progress has kept work at the center that everyone, even the lowest functioning participants, are able to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going up on 25 years with them, which yeah, we know that, that they could amazing. do it. They could go somewhere else and get it done a lot cheaper and all, but they chose to stay with us and chose to be part of Burnt Mountain Center, mm -hmm. which has, they have truly been a blessing to all of us. Good, very good people. Now, you told me you have some keepsakes. Can we share what some of your special memories of your 30 years? Yes. What are, your, what are some of your special memories? Oh, uh, my birthday one day, and there were some of them that had went to dollar stores and all and brought me little trinkets and all, and we had just had the parking lot at the center graveled. And one young man had walked out and got a piece of gravel, uh, a little rock, and he came in and he washed it off and he wrapped it up in a tissue. And he was so proud of that, mm -hmm. you know, because it had little specks of silver in it. Mm -hmm. and, and he thought that he had found me a gem, which he did. Mm -hmm. He did. Mm -hmm. And I still got that. I got wow. that the first year I was there, and it was just absolutely precious. And I have a chest as big as this table filled with trinkets, bracelets, necklaces they've made, and cards, and pictures, mm -hmm. and it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And they have, my guys have been lifesavers to me. I lost my husband 10 years ago, and uh, they were the ones that turned it around. They gave me something to really look forward to, and I look forward to going to the center every day. Mm -hmm. They are truly a blessing with a smile, and it's always a smile, a welcome, a hug, I love you, and no matter what kind of mood you're in, they can make it 
the absolute best. I think that's what hit me so hard. Last night I had a really, really tough night and I've had about 15 minutes sleep. And when they, and I thought, my problems are nothing. You know, I have no problems. I have, I have a great life and, and for me to get down and out and, and mm -hmm. I thought, what are you thinking? Because I had, you know, I was, I was kind of pouty on the way to work this morning because I thought, oh, another one of those late nighters, another one of those problems here. You got a flat tire here. You got all the, and I'm thinking about my own problems and then I look around me and I said, what you doing here, you know? So what a blessing for y'all to show up the day that I had had 15 minutes <laughs> late. <laughs> Well, I had a, I put a jar on my desk, and I'd let all the staff know. We always do a white Christmas, but times are hard now. Right. And people don't have the 20 bucks to throw in at the last minute. So I put it on the, my desk early and said, you know, if you get lunch, you got a quarter or something, you know, throw it in the jar. And uh, yesterday, I had one of the participants come through, and she had went and got a dollar out of her little money bag at the center and all. And she wanted to put money in for mm -hmm. White Christmas. Mm -hmm. She wanted to share with someone else, someone mm -hmm. less fortunate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have been truly blessed and they are, it's every day. Mm -hmm. They're giving to every one of us. And so they make life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And our jobs are wonderful. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was going to ask you, um, what year will you retire? I mean, who will you ever want to go home and leave this great mm -hmm. job? Well, I told the board of directors, Mr. Thornall, the other day that when we did our garden out there, we left a place that they could put me out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, after 30 years, can you imagine what would your life have been like had you not done this? I, I've thought about that, and I would have, I could have went somewhere and made more money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so but then, not seen the smiles you've seen. No. 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 I've got more from these guys here, and I am so fortunate, and I feel so loved. I can go home at night saying that we've done something good, uh -huh. we've done something positive. The uh -huh. doors have stayed open, and we've done something good, uh -huh. and that makes all of us feel good. It makes a difference. I've got the support of a wonderful board of directors. They're excellent. They work Let's so talk hard. about your board. Tell me a little bit about them, because I don't know that I know any of them. We have uh, Steve from Nile, Steve Thornall from Canton. He mm -hmm. is our board chair. Mm -hmm. Very, very good man. Works very, very hard. Now, are the board members paid or volunteers? They're all volunteers. Okay. okay. And they have worked so hard. Uh, we had an in-service on Saturday. They were up there on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was a Georgia game on. So. Oh, <laughs> well, then that says it all. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, Randy Westbrooks from here in Ella J. Steve Brock from Jasper. Uh -huh. Margo Austin's on our board. Uh, um, we have Ben Arp, uh, Gloria Wentworth, uh, John Taylor, uh, a lot of local businessmen and all. And they give of their time. Uh -huh. And, you know, they, it's scheduled that they're there every other month, but they're not. They're stopping right. by all, you know, all the time. Uh -huh. Check to see if we need anything. Uh, to work out any problems. They've set up committees through the board to help us with transportation, uh, human resources, whatever we need, they're there for us. Mm -hmm. And they have been a big support and we have grown from all of their help and assistance. If folks came to visit the center, what might they see? Oh, you would mm -hmm. see lots of people. You would see a chaos Control chaos, <laughs> uh, but it's it, it's wonderful. We have workshops. We have people in the workshop, and they are working hard. We had a young man that had an opportunity, a young man of 82 years that had the opportunity to get out today and go out somewhere and all. Uh -huh. He chose to stay and do the newspaper. He wow. loves to work. Wow. Uh, we have different jobs uh, that they're set up in different locations of the workshop. We have an experience center where we, they are able to go in, they can work on goals or learning mon money skills, learning to work on the computer, um, learning how to fill out a job application. Um, we have clubs now too that they're learning how to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going out to, we have the civics club. They've been going out to different me meetings and all. They went to the parade last week. They're mm -hmm. involved in that. It's a big deal every morning to go out and put the flag up and see the uh, 
allegiance mm -hmm. to the flag. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a craft area back in the back where they can build things, uh, make necklaces, crafts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing a Christmas tree right now, getting everything ready for the library in Jasper. Uh, and it's it's busy time. They're staying really really busy. Wow. And right now we're really really busy. We've got lots of work coming in. Everybody's had the opportunity to work. We've got plans for a Christmas banquet in December. Mm -hmm. Now big, tell big me deal. about that banquet. Oh, it's a big deal. Everybody wears their Sunday best and mm -hmm. all. And the where will uh, it be? It's going to be at Jasper United Methodist Church. Okay. And. Uh, we have a huge meal, and they get to sit down to white linen tablecloths and a you know, nice table setting, mm -hmm. and it's for the participants and their family. The staff works very, very hard to make sure that this is a special, special day for them. So tell me about your staff, because obviously you're not a one-woman show. Oh, no, no. Okay, tell me about your staff. Best staff in the world, the very best, dedicated very, very, <laughs> very know, loving and very giving. You drive a few giving. in here, didn't yes, you? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and if anybody knows that works in any kind of social work, there's not a lot of money. Right, right. And these people give 150%. And if we need them to work on a Saturday, if something comes up, they're willing to do it. If mm -hmm. there's a crisis in a home of one of our participants, they're willing to take the, those kids in their home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're the most loving, caring, giving people I know, and I am, I am truly blessed mm -hmm. to know each and all of them. They're now, when they come to work for you, do you think they have a clue what they're going to get involved in? No. Because mm -hmm. I know, we know Freddie Brackett loved his job, loved participating with the clients from the younger ones to the older ones. He, I think one of his special things was at the Gap. He really, really loved that group of folks. Do they understand that they will take away a life experience that will be forever? No. People are surprised. And when they come to work at the center, they know within the first day if this mm -hmm. is for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have long timers over there. <laughs> yeah, most of them come and won't go. Timers, they all looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> they come and, they, and they're not going to leave. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we're, we're very fortunate to have them. Very, very fortunate. That's the thing about social services. The reward is not in the money. Right. The reward right. is in the life experience and being able to share with others. Mm -hmm. Now, how long ago, Jane, did you become involved in this? Oh, it's not even been a year yet, no, has about, it? It's been about seven months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you find yourself with just time on your hands and you said, how can I give back? I love music uh -huh. and being in the social background. Uh, I enjoy being around people and in the helping aspect. Um, yes, found time on my hands. You can only knit so much. Oh, you know? yeah. And everybody you know has an afghan or a sweater or socks, and they're like, don't do that anymore. So, yeah. But uh, this is just, you know, God gave me the talent to sing and a, a heart of love for other folks. And uh -huh. that's, that's what we do. We share. Now, I, when Janice sits down to this piano and plays, it's a beautiful, very, very nice piano. Do you have a piano at the center? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. We had one donated to us. We just got it about two weeks before Jane came. See, wow. there's a plan. Yes. Yes. There's yes. always a plan. It sounded like a honky-tonk piano, too. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so we had a uh, piano tuner to volunteer time to come uh -huh. and tune the piano for us. Wow. Uh, we've had uh, a church to donate uh, hymnals to us, so we we're we're walk, rocking right along mm -hmm. and keeping it moving. Well, one of the things when I was sharing with you about meeting radio, radio, I was so impressed. Your clients write their names. Mm -hmm, yes. Radio can only do a circle, but when he autographs things, he does a circle, and I'm not sure why he chose that circle. But um, if you get an opportunity. I want to suggest a road trip for your group. Take them to Anderson, South Carolina next year during football season and watch radio come onto the field because the stands are just crazy wild as he breaks that banner. He's yeah. the first member on the field and the team is behind him. The team is behind him 100%. Um, they have made his 45 years in the football business just amazing, but he has given 10,000 times to them, mm -hmm. you know, and they will all tell you the same story. Radio blessed us yes. by showing up with his little push cart. He had his little grocery cart, and, and when I read the true story of him, 
he um, was very withdrawn. And now, he is not withdrawn. <laughs> Let me trust you, he is not withdrawn. I'm still, my back's still hurting from the hugs from radio. <laughs> because he came out of his shell and he now is participating in so many things. And in the movie, when you see he does, he does tell the menu every day at the school, he is giving back. Mm -hmm. He is giving back to the community. Now, your folks, all these who wrote their names, did you teach them to write their names? Did they know this before they came to the center? That some of them did, and some of that's some of the things that we worked with at the mm -hmm. center. Different skills like that. And like you were talking about the community, how much radio give. You know, these guys have got so much to give. Uh -huh. And when the community opens the doors and gives them the opportunity, like y'all have done, this uh -huh. has been great being able to be on this. So, so many people have been able to see oh, yeah. what Burt Mountain Center is. Right. And so it's been wonderful. Uh, give them the opportunity to come into the stores and work. Mm -hmm. And you know, and people will come back and say, did you see him down at the Blue Star putting up stock? Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> and it's, it's wonderful, it's uh -huh. wonderful. And they do have a lot to give. So I, I asked everybody to open your hearts and your doors and to see what comes in. Right. Uh, you'll get a blessing for it. Well, Absolutely. doesn't Royston send little components that they put together? Is that pretty much, so that's a skill? that they would learn? They go down to Royston and work down there. Okay. Lexington brings different parts and things that they inspect and work. Mm -hmm. uh, engineered watering solutions in Jasper. A young man out of Woodstock opened his own company, you know, and so he has got us to help do some work for him. It's mm -hmm. seasonal. There's just lots of different things, and of course the newspaper they do all the time. Mm -hmm. right. But they learn skills that will help them go out into the community mm -hmm. and find different places and all. Have y'all been to the nursing homes singing for the residents? No, we haven't. Okay, now you great. talk about they've, a blessing. They've yes. already asked if we could do that. We yes. do, it's in the planning stages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What a great way for both groups to give back right. because the older folks can possibly teach your clients something oh, because, yeah. you know, yeah. there's so much, so many people sitting in the nursing home who've had these great jobs and they can share their life's experiences. Right. Well, it is an honor to salute you today. We salute you for what you do. We thank, thank you very, you. very much for bringing this group together. Thank and you. can you give the phone number at the center if people are sitting out there who maybe have small businesses and have a job that some of your clients could do? Uh, our number is 706-692-6016. Uh, we have a website, burntmountaincenter.org, and we're also on Facebook. Okay. And be happy for anyone just to come by, take a tour. We're getting ready for Christmas, gearing up for that. Uh, We'll have lots of good things coming up, so please come by. And if you'd like to uh, get one of our newsletters, give us a phone call, leave us your email address, and we'll send it out to you. It doesn't take much to do for others. Mm -hmm. um, we want to say good day to each and every one of you sitting at home who do for us every single day by tuning in and by trusting us to bring you something that we hope will touch you. Right now, sit back and enjoy our friends from the Burnt Mountain Center, the Burnt Mountain Choir. Mm -hmm.